In the schematic shown here, only those lines and components colored orange are involved. Causes for excessive leakage must be found and corrected before proceeding with any further testing because they will be additive to other tests that will be performed. When dealing with a tractor and trailer rig, such as the one we are checking here, our first step when attempting to pinpoint the exact location of the leakage is to disconnect the trailer emergency and service couplings at the nose of the trailer. Then repeat the procedure and check the gauges again for a pressure drop. If the pressure drop is now within the specified limits, then the problem is in the trailer. If the pressure drop is still excessive, then check only the tractor system. Once the leakage has been traced to a particular circuit, the various components within that circuit should be checked out. A soap solution or leak detector will aid in pinpointing a faulty device or loose fitting. For example, if a problem was found in the trailer emergency circuit, we would want to first check the SR2 valve and then the adjoining lines and hoses that regulate the spring brakes. This particular circuit is highlighted in orange here. For a detailed list of the various components in each circuit that could be causing leakage, refer to the checklist for test number two. Once all leakage problems in the supply system have been located and corrected, we are ready to make the third test to check for leakage in the service brake system. The service brake system, highlighted here, is the part of the system that carries air pressure during a brake application. In this test, we will be concerned with all components in this system. Before this test is begun, we should be sure that full reservoir pressure is present. Then the engine should be turned off and the parking brakes released. First, make and hold a full brake application. A block of wood can be used to hold the treadle down while these checks are being made. Then allow the application pressure to stabilize for a minute or so and begin timing the dash gauge pressure drop for two minutes. Note the pressure on the checklist and compare with the applicable vehicle specifications. If the pressure drop in this test is within the limits given on the checklist, then the service system is okay. If it is not, then a comparison of the pressure drop in the front and rear service reservoirs should be made. For example, if the rear axle service reservoir dropped only 2 PSI in two minutes, while the front axle reservoir dropped 20 PSI during the two minutes, then the source of leakage would be in the front axle circuit. Thus, we would only need to check the components that make up this part of the vehicle's air brake system. Again, a leak detector or a soap solution and brush are required to pinpoint the faulty component or connection. If a soap solution is used, be sure to examine the area closely after brushing, for small leaks are sometimes hard to detect. After repairing any leaks, if the vehicle is equipped with cam brakes, make and hold a brake application while having an assistant check for proper brake adjustment. Make a note of the brake chamber pushrod travel. If the brake chamber pushrod stroke exceeds that which is listed in the checklist, a brake adjustment is required. Also, note the angle formed between the slack adjuster arm and the brake chamber pushrod. In the fully applied position, this angle must be at least 90 degrees. Anything less than this does not take full advantage of the leverage that is available. Remember that poorly adjusted brakes waste air, cause longer vehicle stopping distances, and lessen anti-lock efficiency. Automatic slack adjusters, such as the Bendix Sure Stroke shown here, eliminate these problems and save time and money spent on brake adjustments. The fourth test that we will make on this air brake system will be concerned with assuring that the manual emergency system is functioning properly. Here, we will be checking out the park control valve and the trailer supply valve. For this test, the air gauges should show full governor cutout pressure, and the engine should be running at an idle of about 600 to 900 RPM. The system park control valve should now be manually operated while an assistant observes the action of the spring brakes. If the system is operating properly, the spring brakes should apply promptly when the valve is opened and release promptly when the valve is closed. On combination vehicles, such as the one we're testing, the trailer spring brake should also apply and release simultaneously with the spring brakes on the tractor. Next, the trailer supply valve should be manually opened and closed. The assistant should notice a prompt application and release of the trailer spring brakes if the system is okay. If sluggish performance is noted during either one of these tests, 
Then check for line restrictions, such as a kinked line or improperly installed hose fitting. A faulty trailer spring brake valve could also be the problem. As noted in the checklist, if the trailer brakes do not actuate and the trailer supply line remains charged, then the problem is probably in the trailer supply valve. After we have determined that the manual emergency system is functioning properly, we are ready to make our final series of tests to check out the automatic functions of the emergency brake controls. These tests will check the operation of the entire emergency system, as highlighted by the orange lines here. Begin this test by starting the engine and building air pressure to full governor cutout pressure. Then shut off the engine. Drain the air pressure from the supply reservoir and note the dash gauge reading for the front and rear axle service reservoir. Little or no loss of air pressure should be indicated by the gauge. If either system loses an excessive amount of air, the single check valve serving the front axle and rear axle reservoir should be checked. Next, the front axle service reservoir should be drained to zero PSI. The dash gauge should show little or no loss of air pressure in the rear axle reservoir, and the spring brake should not come on. If the rear axle reservoir does lose pressure, then a faulty double check valve that feeds the emergency control system should be suspected. Turning to the trailer system, we should find that the emergency line is fully charged and the spring brakes are not applied. If air pressure has been lost in this system and the spring brakes have come on, refer to the checklist for components that should be leak tested with a soap solution. With air pressure remaining in the rear axle service reservoir, make and release a service brake application. On the tractor, only the rear axle brakes should apply and release. On the trailer, all brakes should apply and release. If not, the double check valve may be faulty and it should be thoroughly checked. This valve is usually located in the service port of the tractor protection valve. Also, have the assistant check the stop lamps during the application. They should come on and then go off when the pedal is released. If not, check the stoplight switch and the respective wiring circuit. With air pressure already drained from the supply reservoir and front service reservoir, we should next slowly drain pressure from the rear axle reservoir. If the spring brakes are controlled by a push-pull valve, it should pop out when air pressure has been reduced to between 35 and 45 PSI. The trailer supply valve or tractor protection control should also pop out between 45 PSI and 20 PSI as the air pressure is being reduced. If it doesn't, then the tractor protection valve or its control is faulty. With the trailer supply valve closed, the supply line leading to the trailer should be exhausted and the trailer brakes applied. If the trailer brakes do not apply, it could indicate a faulty trailer spring brake control valve. Our next step is to close the drain cocks on all reservoirs and recharge the system to full governor cutout pressure. Then turn the engine off and drain all air pressure from the rear axle service reservoir. At this point, we should notice that there is relatively little or no loss of air from the front service reservoir. The trailer air system should also remain charged. With the front axle reservoir charged, a brake application should momentarily be made and released. Our assistant should notice that the front axle service brakes apply and release promptly. The trailer brakes should also apply and release. If not, the double check valve in the service port of the tractor protection valve should be checked. Some vehicles, generally straight trucks or buses, are equipped with an SR1 inverting relay spring brake control valve. This valve is used to regulate braking action of the rear axle in the event that pressure is lost in the rear reservoir circuit. When braking under these conditions, the SR1 affords better vehicle braking control by allowing the rear axle spring brakes to be applied proportionally to air pressure delivered to the front service brakes system, thus providing modulated control of the spring brakes during a quick stop. This valve will only operate when air pressure is lost in the rear axle service reservoir and front axle pressure remains. Proper operation of this valve can be determined by checking to see if the rear axle spring brakes apply and release during application of the front service brakes. Also, an audible release of air from this valve should be heard when a brake application is made. If the vehicle failed to pass any tests that we have outlined here, 
refer to checklist.